purchase of gold. Uh, it was supposed to be arranged through the PMMC. Uh, they would ship it to New York for us to take it to the refinery. Under that process, we would use part of that profit to come back and help develop the community and do a lot of things. All of these things were talked about. Uh, I got to New York waiting for the shipment. It never came. So the amount of money that we spent to do that, when you, by the time you come back and you try to pursue that with the police and this and that, you just you throw your hands up and you say, oh, you just... You now, don't you think you fall into the round and into the hand of the wrong ones? But I'm, I'm like many people. So when you keep falling into the whole bunch of wrong hands, <laughs> how do you find the right ones? <laughs> so you don't know how to find the right ones. Well, if, unless you're willing to stay like I have, you work until you run into the right people. And that's only by the grace of God. Because everybody's not bad, that's not what I'm saying. You can go anywhere in the world and get the same kind of experience. I think for me and a lot of people, you would, you would not think that that would happen in Africa. That you know, that's how most of us come back with the spirit of saying, when we come back to Africa, we can do business. That's not how it works. When you come back to Africa, somebody's trying to take your money. Maybe they think you have money. Uh, I think that's the norm. Uh, you know, uh, dollar is very strong, so they think uh, getting a few dollars from you. Let me chop a few from you. Yeah, <laughs> they, they do become rich in the city. Yeah. Uh, experience like that. Uh, I think it's it's pretty normal. Because <laughs> anytime I go to, to buy something off the street, as soon as I say, how much is it? <laughs> I know that that person paid five CD, but I got to pay seven. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they want to. <laughs> but but should, should, should that be the situation? And then let's come to, you know, let's, let's be serious now. Should, should that be the situation where this is sold for five CD? And because uh, you're a black man, uh, but because they hear the way you talk and they say, oh, it's an O'Brony, then it's something. Well, I'll answer that by saying yes and no. <laughs> it's the way they go about it that makes it a challenge. Okay. But they, <coughs> if, you, if you say this is five CD, but I could use help, I'll give you six, seven. Most people would. But if I know that that's the guy that just paid five CD, uh, uh, pay five CD, and I have to pay seven, then I have a challenge with the person, because what's the difference between me and him, outside of the fact that you know that I'm an American? And when you're under conditions like that, uh, most Ghanaians don't realize, if you build that relationship, we are loyal to the point where we'll keep coming back. I won't buy my onions from anybody else if I have a relationship with you. Uh, so if you if you if you give me an extra onion, I'll make sure that I'm going to buy those onions from you. And that's that's what they don't recognize. We we're we're loyal people, loyal to a fault. Now let, let us take a look at uh, the west of Africa. How would you describe uh, what we have in terms of mineral resources and whatever? And are we are we taking the um, maximum use of some of the mineral resources? No, I think it is. It is the biggest crime of Africa. One, to allow uh, people outside to come and exploit it to the point where they gain their own wealth. And two, to be sitting on it and allow them to come in and take it. And three, not to utilize it for the betterment of the country. Africa has enough natural resources to be what it is, the richest continent on the planet Earth. There is no reason for poverty in Africa, period. Africa has a lot of resources. Yeah. To include people. Underutilized people. So when the education comes up to understand the resources that they have, and people decide that we are going to move our nation forward from a leadership posture, it's, uh, it's a tragedy from the standpoint that it's almost inexcusable for the government to be in a position where they don't recognize the potential and or utilize it to fix these roads, to make sure that the traffic lights work, and I've been in enough African countries to know, despite the challenges in Ghana, Ghana's a lot better off than a lot of African countries. Mm -hmm. So they complain in Ghana, but they're, if they were someplace else, it would be worse. Now, do we, do we then need, I'm talking about we Africans <coughs> now, do, do, do we really need to be traveling abroad? 
considering what we have, like you have just said, uh, we have enough resources to take care of ourselves, we have everything, yet everybody wants to come to you. Everybody wants to go to America. Every African wants to travel to America, thinking that life will be better. Do we need to do that? I think uh, the only reason you would do that is for the exposure and the experience, mm. to see what can be. Because I think there are, you know, I know, the potential for Africa, there, there's some brilliant people on this continent, in Ghana, who, if they apply their knowledge and wisdom, some of them educated in Europe, some in America, they come back and you ask yourself, with all of these resources and your experience, why don't they contribute to the progress of Africa in a way that makes Africa or Ghana's progress? If you, when you come back, the challenges are still there. That's, that's what we're talking about, getting around the challenges. Uh, if, if the government needs to do more. People need to do more. Education in, in Ghana is, is a business. It's not a purpose. You should educate children because you're trying to get there, not because they're paying school fees and that is somebody's livelihood or business. It's, there's some challenges. So education is business in, in Africa? It's business. What is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be an opportunity for children. That's where the country gets its opportunity to advance. And in fact, education should be free. It should be a purpose of the people to ensure that your children get educated because that's your investment in the future. If you don't make the investment in the future, you don't have one. And the history has indicated Yes, I, I met you somewhere and you were talking so passionately about Africa to the point that the first time I would, I would see you raise your voice. That, no, I cannot allow this to happen. You know, I was like, oh, <laughs> Mr. C, what? What, 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 what really created that? Oh. that? <laughs> you recall what I'm talking yeah, about? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, when, you, when you know the potential of people, mm. it would be like if I were a coach of a football team, a soccer team, and I know I've got the best players on the field around the world, and we lose. And then I know that there's something that's unexcusable. It's either they're not motivated to play the game, I'm not coaching the game well enough, or somebody has used a strategy against me that I have to sit back and figure out, or we as a team have to figure out how we get around it. That situation was had to do with the University of West Africa, which we're putting together. Oh, University of West Africa? The University of West Africa. Okay. And the, and the primary target for the University of West Africa is all of West Africa, to create that platform where you can get a Yale, Harvard, Cambridge level education right here at Ghana. Um, and the, the, the premise is when people can see the same thing that you're looking at, then as a coach, I've got my, my team to realize that winning isn't the only thing, it's everything. Mm. Because there's nobody out there that's better than you. There's nobody out there faster, quicker, or thinks about the game the way that we think about the game. Mm. Africa has to think about the game. And that's, uh, I think that's the, the next episode. Well, Africa has to think about the game, and uh, that is the next episode. We'll go for this short break, and when we come back, he is the Director of Strategic Planning of uh, African Call Foundation. Uh, I would like to dive into what that foundation is all about. Is it an NGO? Of course, the foundation is an NGO. What do they intend to do? What are they bringing to Africa? He also mentioned something like the University of West Africa that uh, he is also sitting on top of. We'll find out why should all these people I'll be more interested in the progress of Africa, even than some of us who are Africans. All this we will we'll, we'll touch out after this break. Okay. Uh, that is fine. I don't know.